New details on the arrest of those two girls charged with using Facebook to taunt and bully their 12-year-old schoolmate until she killed herself. Police are now looking into charging their parents, too. And ABC's Matt Govan has the latest on the case from Bartow, Florida. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, George. Those girls just 14 and 12 years old. Now, that 14-year-old is waking up in this mosquito-infested jail this morning. She'll be here for another nine days until she's arraigned, locked up by a sheriff who now says he's investigating her parents. This morning, a community is reeling from the failure to prevent the suicide of what police say was a bullied 12-year-old girl, Rebecca said. Two girls, 14 and 12 years old, arrested, charged with felony aggravated stalking. But Sedwick's parents feel the girls aren't solely responsible. I would rather see the parents and the administrators at that school behind bars. And the sheriff in charge of the investigation now tells ABC News he's investigating the 14-year-old's parents. Is it possible that you could charge the parents? If I could, they would already be in jail. But I can tell you this, that we're keeping our options open. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd has accused one of the girls of gloating on Facebook about bullying Sedwick after her suicide. Her parents insist that her Facebook was hacked, that they monitor her Facebook every single night. Any credence to that? Yeah, that's baloney. That's baloney. Those parents haven't cared from the very beginning. After this initial event, after the initial interviews, why did they let her stay on Facebook? According to the police, Sedwick was bullied online for 10 months. And before that, Sedwick's mother told us her daughter had been physically attacked five times before she finally pulled her daughter from that school. I made several reports to the school. Um, I did one online bullying report because nothing was being done by the school and nothing was done with that either. School officials wouldn't comment on the allegations, but they did tell ABC News progress on bullying is being made. We have seen an increase in um, the reporting of bullying. Parents seem to be in paying attention now. But when we went to Sedwick School to talk to parents and students, they say bullying still goes unreported. The teachers watch, but they don't do nothing about it. We don't need no more lives taken. One time is enough. Zero tolerance is zero tolerance. Now, the sheriff told me that even if those girls are convicted, they're not likely to face much, if any, jail time. He says the only way to stop this national epidemic of bullying is not through police work, but through parenting. George. Okay, Matt, thanks very much. Let's talk more about this with our chief legal affairs anchor, Dan Abrams. Pick up where Matt uh, just left off. Even if these girls are convicted, this is not going to be a long sentence. That's right, which is why I'm surprised that the 14-year-old, the older one, is still behind bars uh, right now. In the juvenile system, they have 21 days to effectively decide where to go with the case. But in a case where you're talking about the likelihood of no prison time, possible some prison time, but currently before she's even been tried, having to stay behind bars, very unusual. Look, these charges in and of themselves uh, are unusual. Why? Because it's, it's unusual in a case like this where you see a felony uh, being used uh, against two kids. Now, you, you have to keep in mind, you need to separate out the suicide from the criminal acts. And I know it's very hard to do that and people don't want to do that. And they're going to say, wait a second, this is what led to the suicide. They're not being charged for the girl committing suicide. They're being charged for their actions before then that ended up leading to it. But those actions are what the charges are here, and it is unusual to charge 12 and 14 year olds with felonies in connection with something like this, putting aside what the ultimate result was. Even more unusual, the sheriff uh, now saying he would like to find a way to charge the parents as well. He's not going to be able to. I mean, it, it, the way you deal with parents in a case like this is with civil suits. The families could certainly sue the parents uh, of the girls in a case like this, but you sue in civil court. That's where you have one family against another. Um, look, I appreciate that this sheriff is taking this really seriously, and I think this is sending an important message throughout the country, but he's got to be careful about extending this beyond where the law allows. And I think he's thinking about that really carefully, because you hear him saying he would have already had them behind bars if he, he had a charge. He knows what a long shot yeah. it is, but there has been a dramatic expansion in anti-bullying laws across the country. Oh, 1990 there was one state in the country that had an anti-bullying law. Now you've got every state except for one. Since 2008, we have seen more than half the states take action against bullying. So no question, this is being treated very differently today than even 15 years ago. Okay, Dan Evers, thanks very much. And we're all wearing purple today Thanks. as part of Spirit Day to stand up against bullying. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.